What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the Art Shack. So today I got a tutorial. I'm doing another one in real time. Uh, I get such great feedback for doing them in real time. So I think I'll uh, I'll try to do a f uh, more here and there in real time since the, the reaction to them is uh, much greater. So this time uh, I've been getting a lot of questions on how to do drawings in atmospheric perspective. So that is exactly what I'm going to be showing you today. Uh, as you can see, I, I have a slight sketch and I have a few things done, but um, the main focus of this is to show you how the mountains will change shade as they progress into the background. Um, I get questions about this all the time. Um, you know, how do you make things look like they appear further back? And um, the answer to that isn't so simple. It um, has to do a lot with what is called atmospheric perspective, uh, which happens because when we look into the distance, the um, water vapor in the air uh, reflects light in all different directions. And because of that, it distorts the light. And that's why you, we perceive uh, distant objects to be much um, lighter and much more blurry than something that is right in front of you. So it takes a little bit to kind of grasp the general concept of it. But once you get the general uh, knowledge of what's going on, it becomes pretty easy to uh, you know just remember how um, you know, what happens. And uh, if you're doing this in color, depending upon the time of day, the color of the distant mountains will change. So if it's the middle of the day, the mountains will tend to be bluer as they progress into the background but if it's more of a sunset or early morning the distant ones will depending upon the the color and the temperature of that color in the sky uh, they can range from like a maroon color to yellows to oranges it all depends on how much um, light is being reflected you know in those in the light particles so I know it can kind of seem overwhelming, but um, don't worry, I'm here. I'll, I'll give you a hand along the way. I'll show you the way. <laughs> nah, I'm, I'm no drawing expert. I'm, this is just what I love to do on my free time. And I, I'm just, uh, I'm happy that I can use the medium of YouTube to share what I know with all of you. And uh, it's, it's really great because I, I get to hear back from a lot of you and what you think about you know, my artwork and you know, how much you, you learn. It's really good. It really encourages me to uh, keep on going on with this, which is nice. Because I think if, um, if I kept uploading videos and I wasn't really you know, getting the, uh, the feedback, I don't know if I'd be uh, as um, ambitious to keep on making more content so it's just I'm, I'm you know more of the story here I'm just really grateful uh, the support that I get from all of you so I, I thank you for all that so this mountain that I'm uh, currently shading in I'm using a 4b pencil this is gonna be the darkest mountain uh, I'm just using the uh, the side of the pencil or the side of the graphite and I'm doing it that way because the natural tooth of the paper will grab the uh, graphite off the pencil and it'll make texture. And I love texture for drawings. It makes it easier t for me uh, because the paper does a lot of the work. Because um, actually drawing in all this texture, it would take a while. <laughs> you know, it, it would take some a pretty good amount of time, which we all know we don't have. I just bumped the camera. Okay. And I made it move a bit. Sorry about that. <laughs> the camera setup I have is awesome, but the uh, if you touch the camera, it just swings and sways. It's. I have a video on, on my setup if uh, any of you are curious on how I do it. 
I think I recorded that with my cell phone. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Okay. So with this mountain being the way it is, um, I'm already considering atmospheric perspective, and I want to show that it's, you know, not so detailed. Uh, just adding in some, a little bit. Um, notice how right here, it's a little bit darker than the immediate, you know, space above it. I'm kind of showing that there's different sections of the mountain, and I'm notice I'm having this one come out into its own little section here, and this one is um, all the way over here like that. So it's just little things that help to um, just show more depth. And then uh, over here, I'll just kind of actually I'll switch pencils. I'll go to an uh, HB. I need to sharpen it though. So I say always have a sh uh, pencil sharpener in hand. It makes life easier. So uh, I'm not going to be filling in this drawing, you know, as detailed as I would like um, uh, I do in some of my sped up videos. Um, it, it's uh, or you know, it, it's just going to take me uh, too long to really uh, portray like a realistic drawing in real time. And you know, last week I did the how to draw a phoenix video. And that video was about 35 minutes long. <laughs> I, I was kind of worried about what would happen, you know, uploading that video if um, if it would get the views or you know how um, much of that video would be viewed a as a whole. And uh, it was it was pretty good. Um, it wasn't bad. You know, I was actually surprised, you know, considering how long it was. Uh, I guess you guys like my longer videos, so it's uh, it's kind of cool how that worked out. So I, I enjoyed that. Okay. Now over here, I'm kind of making like a flat um, plane area that gradually goes up into a slight hill. And um, again, I, I have switched to an HB pencil, which is going to be lighter than the uh, 4B. And I'm just uh, creating like a land here that goes all the way out over here, something like that. You know, not, nothing too, too hyper detailed, but just something. And then kind of like uh, before I made this video, I made a, a fence over here, some trees by the water line. Oh, by the way, if you, uh, I guess I should uh, explain what I'm doing. This is a, a windy river that I did over here. And um, then I have some trees near the water line and some more trees back here. And I'm going to have a few lines of trees that are coming up over here. I'm just making a, like a line of them. And I'm being very, very loose with these trees. I'm not being like the, the hyper detailed uh, like I normally would. Uh, it's it's nice to be able to draw something in in really really detailed form, but then again, it's it's always a good idea uh, before you go for that to get a really rough sketch and to be able to portray objects in a simpler form really helps because then you'll be able to make simple sketches for uh, a more completed drawing. And also it works because if you're out and about, you know, somewhere, and you see something that's really cool, being able to capture the essence of that scene with a, with a, you know, like a 10 minute drawing uh, is really helpful. It's a good skill to have. So being able to draw uh, not so hyper detailed, but to the point where you know, like what's happening in a scene, it's just a, it's a nice skill to have. And that's, uh, that's one thing I've been working on is uh, you know, being able to draw a scene, you know, not super, super detailed like I have, but just enough so that I know what's happening. And that's kind of what I'm doing here. You know, because if you notice these trees, it's mostly just difference in tones that is uh, making up for the details that would be in a tree. And, uh, you know, by looking at it, I can tell that these are trees because I, I defined the tops of these over here. And then in here, I'm just doing different tones and then you can kind of tell what's going on. 
And then over here, I just hit the camera again. There we go, okay. And over here with the trees, I'm just making a few here and there, just to kind of show that there's distance. And you know, one thing that uh, I get asked as well is, you know, if you have a tree, you know, let's say later on I was adding a tree in right here, a big one. And you know, how do you take that, um, you know, that information and how do you um, properly make it so that these trees are in proportion? And to be honest, I, I, I you know, I've been asked this question a few times and I just keep hitting the camera, geez. But um, I've never really considered that. I've always just kind of, and it's kind of hard, you know, I hate to really say it like I'm about to say it, but it's just, I've always just kind of done it, you know, just went in and did it. Um, but also too, you, um, I look at a lot of reference photos and um, what I'll do with that is I'll, I'll take the information from those and simplify it down to a point and then use that sketch and then go from there to the more completed image. But, um, but more back to the point is that when you use those reference images, you can kind of tell, you know, like this is a shoreline and you got mountains that are about yay big. And, you know, you're not going to have trees on this mountain that are, you know, from here up to here. You know, it's, uh, what's nice about landscape is though, is that the scale isn't too difficult to get a hold of and to understand. But you know, at the same time, you know, like I have this fence post here. You know, how do I know that this fence post is in proportion with these trees back here? And it's just a matter of uh, imagining the distance that you know is between here and here. And I'm, I'm perceiving this to be about maybe a quarter mile or so, you know, in real distance. And uh, it's. It's just something that I've um, acquired over time, I guess you could say. I'm sorry, I don't, really, I don't really have like a really, really good definition on how to properly um, make your drawings proportional. You know, that's why uh, when people you know, sometimes ask me, you know, how do you get started? You know, reference is the way to go. Uh, use references to the best of your abilities and um, one thing, one good pointer I can give as far as doing reference, don't go for the hardest images you can possibly find. Look for simple images and um, a nice way to get started is, you know, how to draw, you know, landscape books and things like that. Uh, because drawings by nature are usually simplified, which makes uh, drawing them a lot easier. Uh, so here's what I usually do is uh, I'll I know I said this before, but I'll say it again. Um, I'll go online, find a couple pictures, but also too, if I want to, if I can't find a picture that I would like, or if I want to include some elements in those images, and I, you know, I'll sometimes combine different uh, reference images. And um, the way I'll do that is I'll just lightly gain an impression of the main drawing I want. You know, just looking at the lines. You know, like this one. Before I even started, uh, you came here and you saw just some general lines, you know, basic line work that tells you where things start and stop. You know, that's really all you need. You know, like, let's say if you're drawing like a shoreline, all you need is this line, and then you have it. And then the rest of it is just filling in the detail. So that's usually what I'll end up doing is um, just capturing the very, very essence of an image and then filling in the detail. And I'll show you an example. This is the concept art of a video or a drawing that I'll eventually get to. I have it started and it's in the works, but this is the sketch that I made looking at an online image. And I just very, very quickly captured the line work and some of this I made up. You know, this mountain wasn't there. I put that there. Same with the clouds. It wasn't like that. And I, I you know, I changed it. Um, even though I'll use reference, I still personalize it to my own liking. So that is something that I'm working on. And uh, it's, it's going to be one of those pretty detailed ones. So it's taken me a while to uh, find the time to sit down and do that. Uh, 
All right, so I'll get back to the I'm talking about the drawing a bit. For this mountain, I'm using a B pencil, and it's uh, significantly lighter than the 4B. So I want to show that this mountain is being pushed way back. I'm going to start putting some cross hatching in. shoreline like that so yeah nothing too perfect but just to get the idea of what is happening and then um, you can wrap this mountain around and watch how I do that so there's the shoreline this line it follows around this way and it comes back out if you follow this line and then gradually bring it up like that same with like let's do another one like over here and then start filling this area in and then you can kind of from that you can kind of make another line something like that and that'll be the base of the mountain and then you can continue to fill it in Now just keep in mind though, that when you start wrapping it around like that, you gotta switch pencils. Uh, go to something darker, because that's gonna be closer to you. And uh, you'll see more detail on it. And with a darker pencil, it'll show more texture on the page. So it'll help to uh, show more texture and more details, which tells the viewer that it's closer to you. So it's just different subtleties like that that really help to show uh, where an object is in space. So I'll continue to fill that in. Now it's not much darker, but it's it's you know just a subtle effect. And I'll uh, make a bit. See, I'll make like a new mountain here, just by making it a bit darker, just like that. And I'm continuing to fill this in. So essentially what I'm drawing is like a valley. Just something like that. And I'll grab the B pencil again. Just kind of fill in the shoreline a bit. And then what's always nice is that even though this mountain is distant, uh, you know, push back, you can still take a 4B and go over it, you know, in, in different spaces here and there just to add a little bit more definition to it. Add some areas that are darker, just to kind of you know, show that there, there's different shapes happening within this object. And the 4B pencil works nice because it, it takes off just a little bit and, and that little bit it takes off is quite dark. So it just helps to add a little bit of definition to it. And with this, I'll make a little bit more shape to it. Maybe with this right here, I'll add in some really small trees. Just to really show that they're really far back. Just something like that. Okay. So, um, from this point, I just have two more hills to fill in. And one of which I'm going to be doing probably with this B pencil. But very lightly. And I'm just going to kind of fill it in as a tone. Something like this. And if you really want to push it back, you can get a blending stump and blend it. Which I might do a little bit. Just to kind of make it a bit more even in tone. And it'll also make this mountain here stand out a little bit more. Something like that. I went out a little bit. 
finish that up. And this last one I'll do with a 2H. And again, very, very lightly. Actually this one I won't even fill in all the way. I'll let the blending stump do the rest of the work. I keep hitting this camera. It's shaking all around. All right. I'm gonna fill this one in like that. And then um, I'll take this pencil and um, put a little bit more uh, shadow right along this ridge line to help define where this mountain ends and the one behind it begins. Just something like that. And then just blend it out. And then from here, it's just adding in some more trees, things like that, some more details in the water, you know, and what have you. Um, maybe I'll con do a continuation of this, you know, depending upon you know, your general feedback. So uh, that's essentially how I'll make a distant, you know, mountains, things like that. It's just, it's variation of texture, tone, and, and shade, really. So honestly, I, I really hope this helped you out. If you did, or, you know, if, if you really saw this as valuable, please give me a thumbs up and leave a comment. I really do appreciate it. Um, I really do hope you enjoy this and I will see you all later. Take care. Hey there everybody, I just wanted to leave you with a little bit of an end of the video commentary. If you haven't seen my uh, last week's video, check it out. I drew a phoenix. That's something a little bit different than what I normally draw, but I had a great time doing it. Uh, the next one I did was like the mountains in the mist. That is the middle video. That one is one of my favorite drawings I've ever done. It's one of the most detailed ones I've ever done as well. And the one beneath that is my palm tree beach. You know, just a nice warm beach scene for the summer season. I hope you check all these out and I hope you stick around and please subscribe. I will see you all later. Take care.